Okay, hello everyone. So today I'm going to be reflecting on the reading that I've done in the first half of this year because it is June, which is honestly insane. I know we all say that, but it honestly is. Anyway, yes, I've read some amazing books and I've also read some not so amazing books. So this is going to be the mid-year book freakout tag, which I've done for like the past however many years. And it basically has a lot of good questions for you to reflect on your reading in the first half of the year. So I'm excited to do it again. But before we get into the questions, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Basmo. Basmo is an amazing app that I have been loving. I've been using it for the past like month or so. And it's the perfect app for readers and it's made by readers. So the team at Basmo believe that reading makes people better and they have committed to creating the best tools and features for those who want to get the best out of reading. So the app is super easy to use and has so many features. So some of their features include setting daily and yearly reading goals, tracking your reading times, organizing your bookshelves. You can also read mindfully by recording your emotions and thoughts after every reading session that you have on there. You can effortlessly measure reading time, write your thoughts about the book, highlight the important thoughts with different colors, scan pages to digitize text from it, save favorite quotes, and personalize them with the individual designs. So basically it has everything that a reader needs to stay focused on self-defined reading goals on one single app and Basmo is also available in 11 languages. I absolutely love how you can see like your reading statistics in this app because usually I would just use my own like excel spreadsheet to find out my reading stats because I just love to know but I'm so happy because now I don't have to do that anymore with Basmo because all the stats are automatically generated in the app and it has like charts and everything it's just so stunning so you can see how many minutes you spend reading per day you can see how many pages you read per day it also tells you how many average pages you read per hour which I find really interesting so it has a lot of interesting statistics and if you're a reader you'll just love it like 100% it's just such a good app so I'm going to have the link to the Basmo app in the top link in my description so definitely download it I highly recommend it like I said it's amazing thank you Basmo for sponsoring this video now let's get into the tag questions oh scruffy hello he wants to be in the video I'm actually so excited I feel like I haven't done like a sit down book video in so long so the first question is best book you've read so far in 2021 and Obviously, this question really stressed me out because like I've read so many amazing books like honestly I don't even know if this is my locked in answer But I'm just gonna go with what my heart tells me and ultimately my heart decided on Yoke by Mary H. Cage. Hoi! I just love this book and I think about it constantly and it's just such a standout of the year So I read this in March I think and just wow I read it in a 24-hour readathon vlog So I basically read it in one sitting and it was just Stunning. And not only was this book amazing and just stunning, but it also just means a lot to me because I was really sad at that point. And reading this just brought me a lot of comfort and happiness and it was like the first time that I could actually focus and read. So I also have that connection to this book. But yeah, I just love it. And I also realized after reading this that Mary H. H. Choi is my favorite author. Oh, I just love it. All her books have been amazing so far. And also I found out she's coming out with an adult book next, which I'm so excited about. But anyway, so Yoke is about two sisters and they are Korean, which I really Really appreciate because I love seeing Korean representation. Yeah, so there's two sisters and they have a very like complex relationship. They're not that close, but one of the sisters gets cancer and that brings the sisters together and they're forced to communicate more and spend more time together. And the family dynamics were so, like I said, complex in this book, but I really loved and appreciated it. And I feel like it was super authentic and raw. And that's actually one of my favorite things about Mary H. Choi's books. I feel like she has super messy, raw real characters that feel like they are real people and i just appreciate that so much so this has like humor emotion drama family relationships romantic relationships just so much and i loved it and i'm definitely going to reread it before the end of the year because when i first read it i didn't annotate it and i definitely want to reread and annotate my favorite moments and quotes and everything oh mary shay Choi is just so good at capturing the young adult experience or like the new adult experience sorry like you know 20s early 20s and i love her discussions of race in her books and misogyny and just oh i love her i'm obsessed with her and i'm obsessed with this book so yeah i think this is my favorite book of the year so far but like i said it was a tough 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 choice okay can you move it your butt's in the way your butt's just in the shot and that's not very flattering Okay, so the next question is best sequel I've read this year and I decided to choose The Damned by Renee Audier. I haven't read too many sequels, but this is definitely my favorite. This was a five out of five star read for me. This is a sequel to The Beautiful and basically this series is like fantasy romance and it has like supernatural creatures including vampires, werewolves, more, but I can't really think at the top of my head right now. <laughs> and the first book is like a murder mystery because there's all these murders happening and no one knows who the culprit is and you get perspective 
perspectives from the murderer like chapter perspectives from the murderer in the first book but you don't know who that person is which i found super fascinating there are amazing characters there is amazing romance oh the vibes are stunning it's like stunning gothic vibes it's set in 1920s new orleans i believe as you know i love vampires i love gothic vibes i love the main character Celine, who's also korean and i also love sebastian who is the love interest and i really ship them together so that's really fun and in the sequel obviously the damned we really get to know sebastian more which i really loved because i do love his character and you really get to see his complexities and him coming to terms with his flaws and working on himself and it's just such a good book so stunning sequel i can't wait for the third one this is the cover it's stunning i literally can't wait oh my god when is that coming out okay the next question is new release that i haven't read yet but want to and i immediately thought of ace of spades because well one i've been so excited for this book and two everyone's talking about how amazing it is right now so yes this is basically oh well this is the arc i was actually sent this arc because i won the arc giveaway on twitter and i was like oh i think it's my first giveaway i've ever won i'm pretty sure like i was like oh <laughs> I was so happy. But anyway, so yes, I got sent the arc like a month before it's released. I believe it released this month. And I haven't read it yet, which I'm obviously disgusted by. But <laughs> hopefully I can read it soon. It basically is like Dark Academia, Thriller Vibes. It's pitched as Gossip Girl meets Get Out. Like, thank you. Literally, thank you. And it's supposed to be incredible. I've literally seen nothing but amazing reviews. So I have a feeling this could definitely be one of like my favorites of the year, maybe even of all time. It just has so many elements that I love. Okay, the next question is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And I'm going to have to go with My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. This book, I'm not sure when it's coming out, I think October. I talked about it in my most anticipated releases video, but I'm so excited for this book because it's basically supposed to be like an homage to slasher films that also manages to defy and transcend genre now i've mentioned before i love slasher films i love like horror anything horror really and i love media that is genre bending like it's kind of a mix of lots of different genres exactly also steve graham jones is described as like the jordan peele of fiction and basically the synopsis is, in her quickly gentrifying rural lake town, Jade sees events only her encyclopedic knowledge of horror films could have prepared her for. Thank you! Like, I love horror stories set in a rural town, and I love when, like, the main character is obsessed with horror films. And they're like, oh my god, this is the classic bit in a horror film where the character does this, and then that's what leads to their death. You know, it kind of is like Scream vibes, that guy from Scream. The one who, like, knows everything about horror films, and oh, it's just so fun. That's one of my favourite tropes. So yes, very, very excited for that. So the next question is biggest disappointment and I have to go with These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, which really breaks my heart to say, honestly, because I was so excited for this book. I really thought it was going to be like a new favourite, five out of five stars, but it was like actually a low three stars and that was me being generous. I feel like it's actually a two star read. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I was just so pumped for this because it sounds amazing. It's basically a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in 1920 Shanghai with fantasy elements. Honestly, I was really disappointed because I found it kind of boring and I was so excited for the romance element because obviously Romeo and Juliet is a love story and I was excited to see a stunning love story but the love story barely progressed and I wasn't into it really like it wasn't the main focus of the book it was honestly more about the monsters that were plaguing this world which was kind of interesting but I just wasn't really here for it and this book was definitely more plot driven than character driven and you know me i'm a character driven reader i need the character moments for me to be invested and for me to keep interested in the book but like i said it was mainly about the plot which i just didn't find that interesting and there were some stunning moments between the two characters like the two main characters roma and juliet like i really loved them together but there were only like a few scenes that i was like exactly yeah it was just super slow like maybe the second book it'll be more about the romance but i just was really disappointed in this book and also the writing was stunning like there were some stunning quotes but yeah like i said i just found it disappointing which makes me sad okay the next question is biggest surprise i decided to go with normal people by sally rainey because i did not expect to be so moved by this book and cry and have like a breakdown about it <laughs> if you saw my vlog you saw that i absolutely sobbed which i've never experienced in a book before and it's just because i related to it so much and i was so moved by the powerful writing like honestly i didn't even plan to read this book because I heard about it like a few years ago, but I just didn't think it'd be for me based on what people said about it. But then when I went to New Zealand and Caitlin saw it in the bookstore, she's like, oh my gosh, you need to read this. I'm getting it for you. So then Caitlin got it for me. And I was like, hey, of course I'll read it. I obviously trust Caitlin's opinion and she thought I would love it too. And oh, just 
stunning. I can't get over this book. This was definitely a contender for best book of the year so far. Like it's honestly one of my new favorites of all time. Like it is just so beautiful yet sad, raw. Oh, <laughs> Honestly, like, am I gonna cry again just looking at it? The writing was just amazing. I really, really connect to Sally Rooney, and I might as well just say now, one of the questions is favorite new author, and I have to say Sally Rooney because this is my first Sally Rooney book I've read, and she's 100% a new favorite. I know I need to read her other book, Conversations with Friends, and then she has another book coming out this year, which I'm really excited about, but I just really connect to the way that she sees the world and the way that she writes. Like I said, I just really vibed with her. And a lot of people don't like this book. I mentioned it in my vlog that a lot of people either vibe with this book or absolutely hate it. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I was just looking at it. I have started the show. I'm on like episode five or something. And the show is amazing. Oh, this story is just stunning. It's, oh, I haven't even said what it's about. <laughs> Basically, it's about Connell and Marianne who grow up in the same small town in the west of Ireland. But the similarities end there. In school, Connell is popular and well-liked while Marianne is a loner. But when the two strike up the conversation, awkward but electrifying, something life-changing begins. Normal People is a story of mutual fascination, friendship and love. It takes us from that first conversation to the years beyond in the company of two people who try to stay apart but find they can't. Yeah. <laughs> I just love this book. I love these characters. It's just so beautiful. Yep, yep, yep. That's all I can say, honestly, because I will start crying. Okay, I'm going to combine the next two questions. Newest fictional crush and newest favorite character. Cassian. Okay, the next question is a book that made you cry. And usually I struggle with this question because usually I don't cry in books. Well, that's been the case in the past years. But Chloe Tupano is always crying at books these days. So I actually had a few options, but I decided to choose Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. This is a stunning book that I read recently and I did vlog it so you might have already seen me talk about it but basically this book follows a trans boy Felix who is navigating high school so it's like a coming of age story coming to terms with who they are and their gender their sexuality etc and also them falling in love for the first time and it was Beautiful. Definitely some super sad moments. So I did sad cry, but I also had happy tears because it's really beautiful in the end. And I just love seeing people find who they are and be comfortable with themselves and obviously fall in love for the first time. And I love this book a lot. So the next question is a book that made you happy and I decided to go with Heartstopper Volume 4. Once again, I vlogged when I read this and I happy cried, well also sad cried. I feel like actually this book is definitely more sad than happy, but there was this one scene that made me so happy and I cried tears of happiness because it was so cute. It was like the cutest scene ever. Yeah, it was so cute and I loved it. And this was my favorite volume of the series so far. And if you don't know, Heartstopper basically follows two boys who fall in love and it's just really cute. And it also discusses mental illness. It also follows their friendships with other people as well and just love these characters. Okay, the next question is the most beautiful book you bought slash received. So I decided to answer both. So the most beautiful book I've bought is this stunning edition of The Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, exactly. We live the magic of Disney. Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas through this retelling of the classic stop motion film accompanied by paintings, story sketches and concept art from the original Disney studio artists. I love the... Um, texture of this book oh look at that it's just so beautiful so yes it does have art throughout can't wait to read this to my kids in the future i have this displayed on my bookshelves because how stunning is that cover so yeah i didn't even know this existed until recently so when i saw it i was like oh exactly which by the way i'll link all these books that i've talked about in my description if you want to get a copy for yourself but oh i love it and for most beautiful book that has been sent to me, I decided to go with Chain of Iron. This is the Fairly Exclusive Edition, and I just love, you know, I love Black and Silver. I love a stunning naked book, and I love when there's stunning spread edges. And on the back it says, Secrets Consume Even the Truest Love. And it's just gorgeous. Like, look at this foiling. It's a joke, honestly. Like, just stunning. And also, on the inside, there are illustrations throughout. Thank you. Okay, so the last question is, what books do I need to read before the end of the year? So I'm going to say Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney, because obviously I love normal people and I know I'm going to love this too. And apparently this has Bisexual Rep too, which is stunning. And then I also need to read House of Leaves. This is a horror book and it's supposed to be like the scariest book of all time. And it has like a really interesting format. So 
oh yeah it's just really interesting to me and i definitely want to see if i actually get scared because it takes a lot for me to get scared especially in like horror books yeah i'm excited and i'm going to buddy read it with jamie and caitlin so hopefully we can read it soon but i definitely want to read it before the end of the year and jamie's coming i don't know if i've mentioned on my youtube channel yet but jamie from jamie's library one of my bffs is coming to stay with me i'm so excited so we're going to be obviously filming a lot and stuff like that but I'm thinking when she's here, we can read this together and vlog together. That would be really fun. Okay, so that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you so much once again to Basme for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to download their app. The link will be in the top of my description. If you're looking for more content from me, I have a Patreon where I upload extra content like extra reading vlogs. We do a monthly live show. We have a monthly buddy read, etc. I have my other channels, Journal with Chloe and ASMR with Chloe. I have my social media all linked below. It's just at Books with Chloe. And my Twitch is twitch.tv slash game with Chloe where I stream games and you know just chatting streams so yeah i hope you're all having a day night and i'll see you in my next video